You know, it's funny, isn't it? Um, a lot of my videos, uh, I do a bit of research for, sometimes quite a lot of research, put a lot of effort into graphics, imagery. Um, I've not done one of those for a while, just for various reasons, mainly work, to be honest. Um, but then I do a few videos from the car, off the cuff, just had an experience, want to share it with you. And nothing <laughs> triggers um, the fan base more than a good old chat about Rolexes and the dreaded waiting list. So what I want to do is just have a bit of a chat about my latest one, the kind of views and the kind of comments I've been getting, which have been pretty mixed to be fair. Um, some of them justified, some of them a little bit, you know. So let's dive into why Rolex may trigger people so much. I'm Andy and welcome to the English Watch. Now this channel is about me and my watch collecting journey, an amateur enthusiast with an eye for detail, helping like-minded individuals like you start your watch collecting journey. Now if you like this video, please give it the thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Let's keep those subscriber numbers going up. Let's get to 10,000 before the end of the year. That would be fantastic, wouldn't it? Now before we get into the video, um, let's do a quick wrist watch check. So today I'm wearing my Speedmaster Professional. This is the prior version, 42 millimeter Hesselite glass. Um, 1861 movement, fantastic watch, um, goes with everything, uh, wearing it on this brown strap uh, which I tend to with an Omega buckle, just just goes with everything, it's such a fantastic watch, it's, it's the one watch if you had to get rid of everything else this would be the one you keep, um, so versatile, um, if you don't have one you should get one. Now I was watching that channel, uh, the new channel uh, Effing Time that's got um, Agent Barker and the, the Australian guy from Time and Tide and the, the Bamford guy. <coughs> um, and it's okay, I, I've been enjoying them. Um, but they did one uh, the other week about uh, Rolex and the brand and yeah, they reasons to, to hate on the brand, reasons to love the brand. And it was funny that um, one of the things that they were talking about were uh, you know, which, are the, which are the right, the right Rolex watches and uh, which weren't. And they started talking about the Submariner, um, and I think one of them had a, a, a boss that used to wear a Submariner or something like that, and he had a pathological hatred for Submariners. So they were referring to the Submariner as, um, I'm, gonna call, I'm gonna swear again, so apologies, so it could be raised children, almost like a wanker's watch. And then I was at GQ and I noticed a lot of art directors, a lot of fashion directors wore subs. And I was but vintage. Like, yeah, and I, it, that didn't help. I just didn't think it was. I was. It was in the stars for me. More, but, more wankers, you're saying? Yes. Uh, which I'm like, hmm, prick my ears up. So, I've got a watch. I've got a Submariner. Uh, here it is. I have the wankers watch. Um, is it? I mean, yeah. Is it? Is it more of a wankers watch than the Speedmaster? If you're going to go and buy the quintessential. Omega, well it's a Speedy or it's a, it's a Seamaster, I've gone for the Speedy. Uh, and if you don't want one Rolex watch, why wouldn't you go for the, the Icon? Why is that a wanker's watch? I don't understand it. Um, now if, like some of those guys, you live in London, unlike me, maybe you do bump into people in the street, in the shop. If you hang out with loads of posh people like Mr Bamford does, maybe they've all gone through that Rolex you know, cycle and everyone that wears a Submariner is beneath them, I don't know. If you're gonna put content out like that, you gotta be really careful that you're not alienating your audience. Um, because to some, and again, a lot, going back to the video that I made, the comments that were made, uh, the Submariner is what people want. Um, it's a great, I'm not even gonna call it an entry level watch, because it isn't, it's, uh, it's an iconic watch within the Rolex lineup. Um, if you want one Rolex, and as I did uh, with the Cyclops, you know, the Submariner date is it ticks all the boxes. Now some people want it without the date, which is fantastic as well. That's again goes back to the original, it's the Bond watch from the Connery days. Why you would then suggest that, that watch makes other people have a different perception of you um, is is beyond me. Um, so I, I what I've sort of thought in my mind is and pulling together the thoughts that 
have gone on to my channel in some of the comments and go back and read them. Um, most of them are good, by the way. I, I've sort of tried to categorize uh, where certain people are in their, I call it their Rolex journey. So let's start with category one. So these are people in my view, and this is my view by the way, don't get excited about it. Um, these are people that have bought Rolex over the decades. Um, yeah, maybe they started early um, and Rolex was just another brand on the high street. It was always a brand of success. Um, it was always very proud of the, the tool watches, the sports professional watches that they have. Um, and people bought those for um, the best intentions um, because they wanted the best sports watch, they wanted the best utility watch, either Submariner you know, or a Daytona or whatever it was, a GMT for, for doing whatever they wanted to do. But they also did it because it was, even in the, in, in the 80s, um, it was a watch that showed a level of success and that's what the brand has always been. You know, that sort of aspirational brand. I guess as we get into the, um, I don't know, the last five or six years, those collectors, they may have owned Rolex, maybe they still have a lot of them, maybe they've seen the prices go up and they've got out of them, maybe they've owned Rolex and do you know what I said, I've done that now, I've done it for 10 years, 20 years, I want to move on to another brand, I want to go and go higher, Horology, I want to go to JLC, particularly, whatever it is. So they've sort of done the Rolex thing. There's others that um, may be newer to the hobby, um, like myself, but maybe you know, let's call it uh, starting to get a Rolex in the, let's say the 2010s. So we're starting to get the ceramic watches out, you know, the newer, the new models, the, the, the more flashier models, uh, they're starting to be less toolie, um, but still great watches nonetheless. The prices are starting to eke up, uh, there's the gap to Omega's, you know, sort of creeping up as well. And so there's some watches that start to become waitlisted, uh, but only a short waitlist, and people are prepared to uh, put their name on the list to, to get a watch because again it's still that watch that shows that there's a level you know it's 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 a reward to yourself i'm going to i was about to say that it shows outwardly a level of success and maybe it does to a lot of people but some of these things a lot of the things certainly for me are rewards to myself um does the fact that i then outwardly show something make me a wanker maybe it does to some but that's no different to anyone driving a posh car or going out in a sharp suit or nice pair of shoes um, or you know, when your colleague says when you get when you go for holiday and you say well I've got a caravan you know down in Cornwall and um, they say well you know we're going off to the uh, Maldives we're going to get wined and dined you know looked after and all that good stuff you know you go well fantastic you know maybe you've saved up for that holiday just like a lot of people have saved up for these watches uh, so you shouldn't really uh, cast aspersions um, I guess when people rub stuff in your face, that's different, but um, most of us would just sort of tuck it under the sleeve and go about our business, because we know we've got it. Anyway, where did we get to? Oh yes, so, so the, the newer, so they're, they're managing to get on waiting list, they're managing to get the watches within, I don't know, three months, three to six months, which is no big deal. Um, and the prices are still, although they're, they're gapping from Omega, they're still not crazy. Um, and then the used prices are above retail, but not but not massively. So if you wanted to go and buy a you know, Submariner or a GMT tomorrow, you wouldn't pay much more than retail. Great. And then we get into the whole COVID era and things go a little bit crazy. Now people still, you know, they grow up, you know, they start as infants, you know, they go to school, they go to work, they earn money and they want to reward themselves. So people, even in the last few years, uh, and this happens at all times in your life. You know, it could be you could be in your thirties, forties, fifties before you finally get an opportunity to spend that level of cash on a watch. And maybe you've wanted a Rolex for for years for for many good reasons. You know, because of you know the the brand, uh, the connection with success, sport, you know, cinema, yeah, you name it. Um, you know, why wouldn't you want a Rolex? So <clears throat> we get to a point in COVID. All of a sudden, this is your moment. You want to buy a Rolex. Um, and you start, we're starting to get a bit of resistance now, aren't we? The used prices are rocketing away. Um, you've got those that genuinely want one and now starting to find it difficult to talk to authorised dealers. Um, there's a bit of a flip in the attitude in these dealerships in terms of you know, they're flooded with uh, requests for um, watches that they can't fulfil. Um, obviously there's a bit of a 
uh, a, a supply issue in terms of COVID turned it off a little bit. Yeah, to a degree, we'll never know how much. Um, and then we start to create this environment where the demand's grown um, and these watches continue to grow um, in values, in, in price, you know, list price, but demand is still there. And people are starting to see um, the used prices grow as well. And the gap between list and used is going up and up and up, which again, fuels more demand. So it's no surprise that you know, lots of people are going into these dealers and say, I want this, I want that, you know, Rolex, Rolex, Rolex. So I think there's a set of individuals now that are trying to get in. And I think this is still the case. They can't. They can't even. They can't even get on a list. They can't even um, speak to anyone with have a sensible conversation. Now, I don't think this is. Um, uh, and I'm only going to talk about the UK. But I don't think this is UK wide. Uh, I've heard of plenty of examples where you can go into an independent or even like a, a big chain like Watch of Switzerland or Goldsmiths, and within yeah, a few months get a GMT or a uh, or a Submariner with the green bezel. I, I, a colleague of mine. You know, he's got a good relationship with his local authorised dealer, but he went into another one, I think it was in Leicester, um, very quickly picked up a Submariner with no prior history. So I think it can be done. Um, but I think, yeah, certainly, certainly where I am around the, in the Midlands, uh, certainly West Midlands, there's not a great deal of choice. And I'm pretty lazy, so if I'm in Birmingham, I'll go into Goldsmiths, I'll go into Watch of Switzerland. And to be honest, <coughs> so are thousands of other people. So I... I was, I'm going to call it lucky to get my Submariner. Now people say, well, you know, shouldn't be lucky to get a watch, you, know, you should better spend your money, blah, blah, blah. I'll get it. But you know, I wanted a Submariner. I put it on the list. I bought another th few things in the meantime, which I was happy with. Um, and, I, and I got one, I'm perfectly happy with that. Going back to my experience, uh, the, in you know, the interview, so I've used a lot of bunny ears today, haven't I? Um, I think that, as much as anything else has is, is really annoyed a lot of people. Um, <laughs> and I, I, you know, each to their own. I think for me, and I, I hopefully I described it well enough at the time, um, I dragged my ass out of the house, uh, having just had my heart attack and wanted to climb some stairs. And at the top of the stairs uh, in the boring was a goldsmith. So the opportunity to sit down with a cup of coffee, talk to a very pleasant individual about Watches about fitness, uh, bikes. He was a keen cyclist, as am I. Hopefully, again <laughs> soon. Um, it was great. Yeah, he asked me a few questions about my interest in Rolex, and I get why they've got to filter out the thousands and thousands and thousands of customers they've got because they don't want to be just hello, uh, Mr. Blogs. Um, I've got a Rolex for you. Oh, yeah, not interested. Okay, next. Uh, hello, Mr. Whatever. I've got a Rolex for you. Oh, yeah, not interested. Yeah, how do they? There's thousands of people on the list. How do they? How do they filter out? So, I, yeah, had as a little bit of empathy for my side to a degree. Um, ah, IWC have just kicked in. So my screensaver. Uh, if you go to the IWC site, they've got this. You can choose different ones. We've got the the big pilot uh, 43 now, uh, showing the time. Um, yeah, so I had a little bit of empathy, f um, and and it was no skin off my nose at all. I was I was absolutely knackered. I was sitting down having a cup of coffee, uh, and we were just talking about stuff. Um, he didn't dive into my. He didn't want to know my inside measurement, the, my kids' names, or where I worked or anything like that. He was just interested in me as an individual to to make sure I wasn't a flipper. No no big deal. Um, still don't have a watch, so fortunately. I actually got the watch that I did want, which was that JLC Master Moon Phase, which I will do a review very soon. But the GMT will come when it comes. Um, no hurry, I've got a GMT, I've got the Tudor. Uh, so no harm, no foul, in my view. So anyway, uh, this may be a bit of a rambling one, but um, I guess what I'm trying to say is that all I'm doing is share my experiences. Everyone will have different experiences. I'm fine with people um, giving their opinions uh, or sharing their experiences as well. Uh, I think some of the name calling is a little bit, I don't know, not necessary to be fair. Uh, I was deleting comments, I don't do that anymore. I think you know, people want to go on there and make fools of themselves, then you know, crack on, that's, that's on you, it's not on me. So anyway, just, just a bit of a, a bit of a catch up today. Um, I want to resume a bit more service. There's some things I want to talk about um, later on. I've got some post-it notes I did have all along here, which have taken off obviously for 
it sit rid of the clutter on my desk. Um, so there's a few things I've done that I'll, I will talk about in the, in the near future. So I just really wanted to to take you through in my thoughts. Uh, the video has been has been very successful. It's now one of my top viewed videos in in two weeks. I mean, it's ridiculous. It's gone over twenty thousand views, which for me is you know, it's high, high. It's a high bar. <laughs> um, I'm sure if uh, you know, Adrian farted out a video, he'd get 20,000 views an hour. I mean, me getting that in two weeks is uh, uh, is pretty incredible. So so thanks for everyone that, that's found the video and uh, I've grown, say, a number of subscribers on the back of it. Um, so I must have done something right. Either that or people just want someone else to latch onto to complain about, but um, I'm, I'm happy either way. Anyway, I'm Andy, this has been the English Watch. Take care and I will see you very soon. Bye for now.